Jessica and I'm the platypus keeper here at the sanctuary and this is Ember who's a two-year-old female platypus and she was bred here as part of our captive breeding program. Hillsville Sanctuary was the first place to ever breed the platypus and so far there have only been two zoos that have successfully bred them. Now most of our success has occurred just within the last three years uh, where we bred some twins. We bred Ember here and we had a baby boy just earlier this year. Well, they're, they're so cool because they are unlike anything else in Australia or in the world really. As you can see, they do look a little bit unusual, um, but they do actually have loads of personality. So Ember here, she's our troublemaker. So if there's something to climb on and jump off, she's your girl. The platypus is one of the most expensive animals to keep in captivity. It costs us around $13,000 just to feed Ember for one year, which is about double what you would spend on food for yourself every year. This is how many yabbies Ember will eat each day. She also gets a big handful of earthworms. She gets some mealworms, fly pupae, and as a special treat, which she'll get today, she also gets blackworms and dra dragonfly larvae. They do like to eat a whole range of invertebrates from yabbies to worms and all sorts of bugs that you find in creeks and rivers. And all of these invertebrates are really dependent upon the type of water that they live in. So only clean water that doesn't have any chemicals in it, uh, those invertebrates will be able to breed there, which means the platypus will have lots of food. If the water is contaminated and really dirty, there'll be no food for the platypus. So just by using phosphate free detergents you can actually help save animals like Ember here. Now, I love crocodiles and snakes, but echidnas are my absolute favourite animals, and you can find them all over Australia. But some of our echidnas have actually come to Australia Zoo because they've been hurt, just like little Three Foot here. Now, if you have a look, he's called Three Foot for a good reason. He has a missing foot. And what happened to poor Three Foot is he got stuck in a swimming pool skimmer box, which was really sad. So he lost his leg, unfortunately, but he has a good life here at Australia Zoo now. They're really cool because they're monotremes, which means they're egg-laying mammals. And there's only two monotremes. Only two monotremes in the whole wide world. Yeah. One is the echidna, and do you know what the second one is? The platypus. It's true, so they're really unique animals. What I'd really like to show you is how long that tongue really is. So Robert, can you please take your shoes off for me? Okay. <laughs> and what we do, let's move his shoes so we can see, is you get a good clump of this food and spread it all over his toes. <laughs> then they lick all of their food off your toe. Actually 18 centimetres. 18 centimetres or seven inches, depending on where you live. Oh, it really tickles. All right, what I didn't tell you is what this food is made out of. This is actually squished insect, a little bit of mincemeat, and some olive oil. And what else is pretty cool about the echidnas is that they have a really good awareness so they can pick up where the ants and termites are using these sensors all along their nose. And they are great at defending themselves, isn't that right? Do you know how they defend themselves? Yeah, what they'll do is if a predator is trying to eat them, they'll actually sort of dig like a little hole and then they'll push their spikes out towards the predator. Then the animal can't get a hold on them yeah. and just walks away and leaves. Because who would want to eat a pin cushion, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that wouldn't be very good going down your throat. <laughs> no, so they're very clever. 
Don't forget to watch next time to see another amazing animal. And don't forget to subscribe up here. short-beaked echidna puggle. It's only about 30 days old when it came in and it's uh, quite bald and no spines yet. It was found at Anna Bay um, on a walking track so it's quite possible that it just fell out of mum's pouch because it would still be in mum's pouch at that time. Um, when they get a bit older, they may about 10-15 days older, they're actually left in a burrow and mum only comes back every couple of days to feed the puggle. So at the moment I only have to feed this one every two days. It just sucks uh, milk out of my hand because the, uh, the mother doesn't have any teats. Uh, she just has milk patches so baby would just suck the milk off those patches. I do take it home with me. At the moment I'm keeping it in a small esky just to keep the right temperature. They actually have quite a low temperature which is about 25 to 27 degrees so um, the Esky is really good for keeping that constant temperature. I'd say it's been a few months yet before it looks like a real echidna. Uh, they actually don't wean or come out of the burrow till they're about six or seven months, so still got a lot of tender loving care um, for a few months yet. Yeah.